It's a brand new year. And a brand new you. No, it's the same you. It's a brand new do in 2022. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time it's January 1st, 2022, you'll be alerted to it. So goodbye 2021. I'm not gonna cry too much <laughs> that it's over, but I am gonna ask 2022 to be gentle. So we have a brand new year. We have a brand new you, according to most people. But Rachel hates the term new year, new you. I cannot stand it. If you really want to grind my gears, say to me, hey, new year, new you. Because it is the same me. I am the same. And there's two reasons why we want to bring up the fact that the same me that we're bringing into this new year is okay. Number one, have I made some mistakes in the past? Yes. However, I've made some good choices mm -hmm. in the past. I've made the decision to marry Joe. I have made the decision to have children. I have made friendships in the past. I have finished schooling. There are a lot of really good things that I have done. And if we just clean the slate and I'm just going to be a brand new person, then I am in effect trying to throw out the good things about me with the bad things. And I don't want to do that because there's lots of good in here. Well, the other problem with, for us, new year, new you is when you're saying there's going to be a new you, that means you're going to throw out all of your old bad habits. And we talk a lot about labeling yourselves. One of the terms that we absolutely cannot stand when it comes to keto is you're doing dirty keto or you're having a cheat day because you're labeling yourself as dirty or a cheater. Well, the same thing kind of applies when you go new year, new you. So if you say it's a new you, that means you're throwing out all of your old bad habits. But now what happens if you slip up and allow one of those bad habits to come in? You failed. Yeah. So instead of new year, new you, Rachel came up with the term of new year. New do. Because it's- Not a hairdo. Not a hairdo, although last year, you know, yeah, I did do, have a new hairdo. This is a new do. It's a new way of doing things. It's a new way of identifying things that we are going to participate in, right? Mm -hmm. So last year in 2020, when January 1st rolled around, I was not a paddle boarder. That was not something that I- did. Right. But now, as we go into this year, that is something that I do. We took a risk, we stretched ourselves in our comfort level, and we did it. And there were times when, especially for Joe, getting on the paddleboard and thinking, I'm not going to be successful at this because um, he has ankles that can, you know, bear different weights. He kept trying at it, and now he can do it also. Was it easy? No. Did it need repetition and practice? Yes. But now it is something that he does. And so as we go into this new year, we want to think about what are the things that we want to do do right. in the new year. Now, we are not really big on New Year's resolutions because let's face it, most people give up their New Year's resolution a week, two weeks, maybe a month in. So instead, we like to just focus on what can we improve for the year overall. The other thing is, is every year we always take the first month of the year, the month of January, and we do some type of fast for God. And we've done different things. We've talked about this on videos and live streams in the past. We've done things like not eat at all. We've done keto chow only. We've done no sweeteners, things like that. And we really thought hard of what do we want to do this month? And we decided to basically do beef, butter, bacon, and egg 2.0. Yeah. So we're changing things up a little bit. Now I do want to 
put a couple things out there right now. There is no requirement for you to be part of the Two Crazy Ketos family to participate in this with us. This is something we are doing whether everybody participates or nobody. We're just putting it out there. This is what we are doing. And to be honest, we are not doing this to lose any weight. No. Will we probably have results? Yes, but that for us is not what the focus is. For us, the focus is simplifying our eating style and what we're doing so that we can focus on God at the beginning of the year. That's just why we're doing this. But again, if we stick to it, we know we will have results. And you might be doing it for just, I want the results. And again, if you stick to it, you will most likely have results. So what do we mean by 2.0 beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? Well, the last time we did beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for 44 days, mm -hmm. we did not incorporate keto chow. Right. We didn't do that before. And so this time around, we are going to be incorporating keto chow for ourselves, one keto chow per day. And the reason for that being is we have to do quite a bit of traveling and we're going to be locked into a place so that we won't be able to go and come as we please to grocery stores at least during a week of this month. Right. So we want to make sure that we have plenty to, to eat while we are on our trips. Now, I do want to clarify that when we say one keto chow a day, that doesn't mean we are going to eat one keto chow a day. It means we are going to limit ourselves to no more than one keto chow a day. And I can honestly tell you, it's probably gonna be a couple a week at most, maybe putting a little bit into coffee, but you know, we are not going to be having a keto chow every single day. We're basically just giving ourselves permission that along with beef, butter, bacon, and egg, we can also have an occasional keto chow. Now, when you look at beef, butter, bacon, and egg, I think a lot of people think that Beef, butter, bacon, egg means you need to eat beef, butter, bacon, egg, and keto chow. You can throw any one of these out. If you don't like pork or maybe you don't eat pork for religious reasons, you don't need to eat bacon. If you can't stand the taste or smell of butter, you don't have to have butter. No. The whole focus on this is you're limited to these items beef, butter, bacon, egg, and keto chow. And feel free, if you are joining us, to go ahead and make modifications. If you say like, hey, I really don't wanna eat beef, I would like to just eat a bunch of eggs, feel free to do that. If you wanna allow yourself more than one keto chow, go ahead. This is what we are doing. So let's go over the rules of what we are putting on ourselves. So. We're gonna do beef, butter, bacon, egg, and allow ourselves up to one keto chow per day. You wanna talk about beef? What do, what do we mean by beef? Yes, yeah, so beef is going to be a big umbrella because mm -hmm. beef is going to represent any ruminant animal. So if you would like sheep, mm -hmm. if you would like goat. Elk. Yep, yeah, anything like that, you can eat that under the beef umbrella. Yeah. Then I think butter is pretty self-explanatory. Self so butter, you could that also includes ghee, which is just clarified butter basically. So any yeah. type of butter. When it comes to fats, any type of animal fat is fine. You can use lard or tallow, you know, but we're, we are not having avocado oil, MCT oil, coconut oil. It's gotta be from an animal when you're looking at your fats that you're going to be using for your food. And this is a big challenge for, for some people who may be wanting to join us and normally even drink their keto chow with heavy cream or right. heavy whipping cream. We will not be incorporating cheese or dairy you know, of that sort of milk into, mm -hmm. into this regimen. Yeah, the only dairy we will have is the dairy that is within Keto Chow itself because it is a milk protein isolate, but there will be no added dairy, no half and half, no heavy cream, nothing like that. Now, I know we're talking about butter, but we're talking about the heavy cream and stuff. Why? There's carbs in heavy cream. Yeah. It's easy to overdo heavy cream. Heavy cream for a lot of people, including ourselves, gives some gastric distress. So we're limiting ourselves to butter. Then we have eggs. Eggs is self-explanatory. Any kind of eggs you want. You can have hard-boiled eggs, scrambled eggs, cooked eggs. You can have poached eggs. You can have pickled eggs. Yes. Anything you want. Uh, now, bacon. Bacon is one that is kind of up in the air. And when, when, when we talked to Dr. Barry about this challenge, when he first presented it to us last year uh, in September, 
I asked him about bacon and he said, listen, how can I not include bacon? Is it, is bacon so delicious. nearly as good for you as eating a ruminant animal? Absolutely not. But it is nice and fatty and it is a delicious thing. So we're gonna add bacon in there. Now, when we first did the challenge, he did tell us that if you wanna have some other pork, have a little bit of it, but I would try to stick to more of the ruminant animals, but I would honestly stay away from any kind of ham, like especially store-bought ham, because they all have sugar in there. So if you wanna have something other than bacon or pork belly, which is bacon, if you wanna cook it yourself like ribs or a pork chop or a pork loin roast or something like that, that's fine, but I would not go to the store because almost all of that is going to have some type of sugar or sweetener injected in there. Also, I would not do much of that because it is very lean compared to bacon and pork belly. Yeah. Now, what are the no's? Uh, no sweeteners. That's a toughie. Now, there are sweeteners in keto chow. A that's, little bit. that's the only sweetener we will have is so, if we have a keto chow. So that's why it's definitely a 2.0 for us because th that will be be a sweetener mm -hmm. that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. But no added sweeteners to your coffee or drink or any of your sauces. We do uh, use mustard. Mm -hmm. We make our own mayonnaise. We do have a butter mayonnaise recipe yep. that you may enjoy. We limit our seasonings to sugar-free seasonings. You definitely have to check the ingredient label on theirs. There's a lot of uh, you know seasonings out there that have sugar in them. I would limit your seasonings as much as possible. Stick to like the Redmond seasonings, the seasoning salt. If you wanna do maybe a little bit of chili powder or something like that, but understand all the seasonings, especially when you get into chili powder and cumin and all that stuff, there are carbs in that and it can add up very, very quickly. The whole idea of this is to be eating as close to zero carb as possible. And again, that is why we are not gonna do keto chow every single day. We're just giving ourselves that out for travel days and things like that. But the closer you eat to zero carb, the better the results that you are going to have. It's also a great opportunity for us to test our relationship with food. Yeah. If we only eat keto chow and drink keto chow, then we're letting keto chow deal with our relationship with food. It's yeah. time and it's okay. One of the things that we're fasting in January is disbelief. Right. We are going to trust the process. This is a big ask. I understand that it is scary. We were very scared the mm -hmm. last time that we did it. But as you can see, you guys watched us. We vlogged our entire journey during that. It was safe all the way through. We were able to get lab results. We were very happy with the progress that we made. Was it hard not to have any vegetables? Yes, mm -hmm. some days, because that's another thing. It no was hard vegetables. to not have cheese, I'll tell you that much. Absolutely, but if you will fast disbelief fast that pushback that you're the immediate knee jerk of like, I'm not doing that. Then I believe you will have some good results and probably move some stalls that yeah. have been in your way in the past. So one of the things is, is when, if, when we get used to something and we feel like I cannot live without it, it becomes an obstacle in anything we're trying to do. And it, that's not even just in your eating lifestyle. But when you look at your eating lifestyle, you know, one of the reasons, even early on when we were first introduced to Keto Chow, we said that Keto Chow can be your only meal. Do I think that eating only Keto Chow three meals a day to try to lose all your weight is a good idea? Absolutely not. And we've even heard Chris and Miriam, the owners of Keto Chow, say that. One of the reasons is, is if you get so reliant on that and you haven't dealt with your relationships with food, what happens when you go off? Yeah. You still have those issues with your relationship with food. So when you start putting yourself in for 30 days, I'm going to basically give up stuff that I love. Like I love cheese, but for 30 or 31 days, um, I'm giving up that and it helps me deal with my relationship. When I gave up cheese for the 44 days that we did beef, butter, bacon, and egg, I realized, you know what? I don't need to eat six to eight ounces of cheese a day. That's right. And I was got by. I survived. At the end of it, I had a different relationship with it where now I can go in and have a piece and not overdo it. I can go ahead and have that better relationship with cheese. Well, and I think that that's the biggest testimony that I can give you 
to this beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge is we have gotten through the entire month of December. We went back and reincorporated different vegetables and cheese. food and cheese and all that kind of things. And we have not gained our weight back that we lost on that challenge. And most importantly, that entire month of December and from the end of the 44 days, so it's like halfway through November, all the way through December, not only did either of us gain any weight back or, or size, uh, but we did not do any macro counting at all. We never sat down and said like, hey, this is all we're allowed to eat for the day. We ate until we were full, when we were full, we ate when we were needed to be satisfied. There were some days where we fasted, some days where we didn't, some days where we ate two meals, some days where we ate three meals, some days where we only ate one meal. And we just took what we learned with the original beef, butter, bacon, and egg, applied it to our life, and we've been sustaining. So moving into this month, it's gonna be a very similar thing. Now, Dr. Barry's whole challenge was you could eat as much of beef, butter, bacon, and egg as you want, as many times a day as you want. And he said you would not gain, if you did this for 90 days, 10 pounds of fat. Now, we are incorporating keto chow on an occasion, so that kind of throws a wrench into it. So what we are going to do, although we are not going to meticulously count our macros, because the whole idea for us is to not be concentrated on food and stuff so that we can focus on God for the month, we are going to try to limit ourselves to not overeat and go over our protein. So it's not gonna be eat as much as you want, at least for us. It's going to be eat what we feel we should be eating and occasionally take a look and go be like, hey, you know, that was the appropriate amount of protein. And as you do this, you start realizing like, hey, you know, Eating a pound of ground beef, that's a thousand calories. That's 80 grams of you know protein and that kind of stuff. We're gonna try to keep it one to one. Yes. So that brings us to what, what can, can I, I drink? drink? And uh, it's pretty simple. So we're gonna start off with Rachel's favorite beverage. Coffee. Coffee. So uh, back when we did it last time, Dr. Barry said you can have one cup a day, but it didn't matter what size cup. So we are basically changing the one cup to one coffee experience a day because it doesn't matter whether you're having a 10 ounce cup or a Rachel 24 yeah. ounce cup because it doesn't matter. Why can only one a day? Because we're trying to limit things that we binge on and we rely on. Something that we are addicted to because let's be honest, if I'm like, you can't take my coffee, that's addiction. Mm -hmm. That's right there. That, right. And I am, am a coffee addict. So it's not a bad idea to check that relationship with coffee. And I will say I am happier on the other side of BBB and E. Do I have a giant flipping cup of coffee every morning? Yes, but I used to have four or five of those coffee experiences a day. Now I don't and I'm still enjoying life. Now, when we say one coffee experience, it's gonna be different for everybody. Like I said, it could be a small cup or a large cup for Rachel because she got the Nespresso machine for Christmas. Her coffee experience is most likely gonna be like a shot or a double shot of espresso and a cup of coffee sometime during the day. But if in the morning she decides, I'm only having a double shot of espresso, she can't have the other cup later on. It's one coffee experience. And again, you done. can do with what you want with that. The other reason that we are limiting coffee at, or Dr. Berry limited coffee is, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there is carbs in coffee. And the whole idea again is keeping our carbs super low. Well, and if you're somebody that does not drink your coffee black, this is even more important mm -hmm. because we're adding stuff to it. So, I mean, for some people that don't want to add an egg to the coffee or butter to the coffee or keto chow to the coffee, if you're like, I can't have coffee without cream, you may step away from coffee altogether yep. for this challenge. Yep. So what else can you drink? If you don't like coffee, you can have tea, okay? So long as it doesn't have any sweetener in it, you're good there. But again, I would try to limit it to, if, if you're a, I drink 10 teas a day, limit it to one tea experience. You can have water, and then we are also incorporating sparkling water. So sparkling yeah. water, we're talking about things like maybe San Pellegrino, Topo La Chico. Croix. You can have any of these seltzer waters that come in a can, although they're getting ridiculously expensive. The biggest thing is no 
sweeteners, no calories. So maybe just a flavor one. Are, are there natural flavors in there? Yes, but you know what? Good enough. But no soda, no sweeteners of any kind. That's also going to, and this is a tough one for us the last time, no zip fizz and no uh, flavored electrolyte drinks. But you still need to get your electrolytes in. And there's you know, a couple of ways that you can do that. Mm -hmm. We really enjoyed these tablets that we had gotten or capsules the last time. They actually came out right when we started Beef Butter Bacon and Egg. As if by Providence. Um, and we've really enjoyed them and they really, really helped. And so we're returning back to these from Redmond, but you also have- You can have also use the Daily Minerals from Keto Chow and then you can use the electrolyte drops. So again, now remember Keto Chow has one third of your electrolytes in there. So you can get that and then just supplement a little bit with this, but you don't, if you're doing the daily minerals, that's a great base. And then you also have the two of the Relight capsules that we really rely on is the Energy Boost, which is kind of like having a Zip Fizz. Yeah. Gives you that same jump. And then the, uh, this is called Hydration Support. So this hydration one is plus really is good. good too. Oh, that's what I thought I meant was the uh, Hydration Plus. The Hydration Support is just basically a salt capsule. The Hydration Plus has all of your electrolytes and it works out to be actually a little bit cheaper than buying the sticks of electrolytes from Element or from Redmond. Yeah. So that's pretty much what we are doing for the entire month. Now let us know down in the comment section, are you joining? Are you making any modifications? Maybe you're not even doing the beef butter bacon egg, which again, we said is totally fine, but we are going to ask you, do something. Make something your new do for the year. And that can include fitness as well. We are going to be doing a lot of activities this coming year, and we're going to show you how we do with these new adventures, including scuba diving. I oh, you're see, reading my mind. I can see that stinking smile on your face. Well, that's going to be the end of today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we do something new in 2022, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. bye.